Alright guys, what's going on? Today is Tuesday, July 28th, and uh, today we have a story that has to do with the Parsha, Veschana, and a few little stories about the Indian of um, when you daven, that you should be very clear in what you're davening for, meaning that you shouldn't jumble the words and just say, oh, I want this, you know, when you're, when you're davening to Hashem, I want this to happen, or help me do this situation, you need to be very clear um, in the Indian of what you daven for. You have to daven for everything, and uh, we're going to talk about that. But anyway, this story is about, um, it says in the parsha this week, about not uh, swearing on Hashem's name in vain. So there's a story over here that there was this Russian general who was going on the way between the city of Pilov and Karov. I don't know where those are, but I'm sure it was somewhere in Russia or Poland or whatever it was, or Ukraine or whatever, back in the day. And he lost a very expensive um, snuff box, a tabak, a very, it was made out of gold and had pearls and diamonds and jewels on it. It was a very cool, expensive box for his snuff and tabak. And he was very, very pained by this loss. And, uh, and he ordered all of his soldiers that he, that he was in charge of to go look for it. And they couldn't find it. So the people, some of the soldiers said to him that on this way that we went, also a lot of Hasidim go. They go to the ear of Kotsk, where the Rebbe of Kotsk, the Rebbe Nachman of Kotsk, the Kotsker. Um, so maybe they said to him, it's very possible that he that one of them found this uh, box, right? Because they said that the meaning of his of a chassid after he comes on a journey is to tell all the inyanim to a rebbe, which is true. So maybe the general should go to the Kotzker rebbe and to make him swear in front of him that the Hasidim did not tell him anything about the snuff box. That means that if a Hasid would have went on this way and he would have found the snuff box and he obviously would have told Rev the like the, the whatever, like he would have told the he would have told the Rebbe. Because the Hasidim told the Rebbe everything. So this guy is saying, go to the Rebbe, make him swear that he doesn't know anything about the snuff box. Fine. Interesting idea. So word got out that this was going to happen, I guess, and there was a Talmud of the Gadol, uh, there was a there was a Talmud of the Chidush Arim who heard this, and he had a lot of Agnes Nefesh that they were going to make the Rebbe swear, right? I guess the, the Chidush Arim and the Kotzker are related, right? Somehow, I don't really know how, but they are. Um, I, I have to learn that history also. Um, and uh, that they were going to make the Rebbe swear, even though it wasn't his Rebbe because he was a Talmud of the Kedusha Aram, but still, he was very pained that they were going to make the Kotzker swear. So he met this guy, Rav David Altshuler, who was from the Hasidei Radzimin. That was, this guy, Rav David, was a friend of the general, Ba'if and Ishi, in a personal way, because he, this guy, Rav David, was like a businessman with the army. He gave them supplies. He was Mesapi Schoyrus to the Tzavah. He gave, he gave them uh, whatever, I don't know, whatever he sold to them. He was like their supplier. So he knew this general very well. So he said to the general, so he said to this guy, this Talmud of, of the Chidush mm-hmm. Arim, went to the general, He sorry, the, this Talmud of the Chidush Arim went to this guy, Rav David, who knew the general. He told him to convince the general not to make the Rebbe swear, right? And he's going to be maftiach to Rav David Oilam Haba if he makes him, if he can get the general to make the Rebbe not swear. And uh, and Rav David heard this. He said, "How do I do it?" He said, "Just go do it, and and and, um, and Hashem will help." So Rav David went to the place where the general was staying, to his palace, whatever mansion, whatever it was at that, at, at the time. And he spoke to him about the about the lost uh, snuff box, right? And when he told, and when he heard from the general that he's going to make the rabbi swear, so this guy Rav David explained to the general that the rabbi's meforsim via duak ish that the rabbi is a truthful person, and you don't have to make him swear at all. 
after Meachashu Oimer Tadir Emes Virak Emes, because he only says Emes. So, and he said, if you want, I'll come with you to Kutsk, and we can, and we can, and I can prove it to you, and I can show you that you know it's true. So the general said, fine, and they went on the train and they went to Kutsk. And when they went to the Rebbe, this huge pachad fell onto this general. Who was such a big guy, whatever. All of a sudden, he walked into the Rebbe's room, and this huge pachad came with him. And all he was able to ask was the Shiloh about this kufsa, about the box, about the snuff box. And the Rebbe answered him that he doesn't know anything about it. And he believed him, because the Rebbe spoke truth. Afterwards, he asked the Rebbe, he says, What is your special kayach that you have? That, that so many people believe in it, right? Like that you say truth and that you this. Like, how, how, what's your, what is your koyach? So the Rebbe said, very interesting. That he said this. He said, I am able to attach my mind to one thought, to one Indian, for twenty four hours straight, without any hefsik of another thought, which is crazy. And that is why people felt the power of the Rebbe and what he was able to do is because he was able to attach his thought. He says, in, he says it in this Lashon. He says, The general was like, sh- was like shocked. And he said, In my head, there's a thousand thoughts that go at once. He said for sure that you're a godly man and you're telling the truth about this box and he and that nobody told him about it and he and he pottered him from taking the shvur. And when David came back, told the Chidush Arim. Oh, I messed up the story big time, guys. <laughs> the Chidush the Chidush Arim is the Talmud of the Kotzker. Because I'm an idiot, and I thought that he was talking about before the Talmud of the Kotzker, the a Talmud of the Chedush Yarim was sad about this. It was the Chedush Yarim was sad that his Rebbe was going to take a shvu. I'm sorry. Um. So yeah. So just remember that. And I'm not going to do the video over again. But. Uh, but um, yeah, so now when this, so he was the one who told this guy Rav David Altsor to go to the general and make the thing, and now everything worked out. So now when Rav David came back to the Chedush Arim and told him that the Rebbe didn't have to swear, so he says, "What should I give you? You want, do you want barrels of gold or do you want Oilam Haba?" And Rav David said to him, "I want Oilam Haba." And when he came to his rabbi, Asher Berat Zimin. Right, because this guy Rav David was a was a, was a chassid in Rav Zeman. He told him the story, and he said, "You did very well." So it's an interesting story. Nothing crazy, you know. Just an interesting story how the Kutzer got out of taking a shvur from the Russian general, because the Russian general realized that he's a man of truth, and that's when you walk into a real tzaddik, you see that he's a man of truth. Now, I just want to talk a little bit about the Indian. First of all, Rabbi Nachman talks about this Indian also, that. You should pray for everything, no matter what it is. You're going on a small journey. You're going on a big trip. You're going, somebody's traveling towards you, something, you're going to have this person, you're meeting somebody. You should always pray to Hashem that everything goes well and smooth and in His Ratzon. And you should be, and and, and, and there's different in Yonim that they talk about, that when you dive in about these certain things, you shouldn't just say like as like a general thing. You should be mefarit. You should be, you should dive in with details. I guess that's how they would say it. So, like you can't just you know you if you say something too general, then you know you might not get the result that your prayer was answered. For, you know what you wanted, and these are deep in yonim that it's not fully completely understood by my small mind, but. Uh, for example, let's tell the story over here. Like one time, Rabbi Nachman told Rabbi Nassim to even daven for a for new shoelaces, right? You know, his shoelacer. He's like, what? Daven for a shoelace? I just go to Storm Bible. He's like, but go. You have to daven for everything. Even if you just go to Storm Bible, and even if this, you could daven for it. Hashem will help you have money to buy a shoelace. Back then, it was probably different. Whatever it was, I'm saying just anything that you need, you should daven to Hashem and always be thanking Hashem and all that stuff. 
So what does that mean over here? So for example, this story is called even praying about the spoon. Okay? So it says that Rav Yitzhak Isaac of Zidichov Zichusim Kyogen Alenu Siper, he told over a story that one time Rav Mendel of Rimenov, right, when he was when he was learning and staying by Rav uh, Rav Elimelech of Chlizhensk, his darko every single day he was sitting there he he was sitting by um, he was sitting by Rav Meilich every day, and he would always eat with Rav Meilich on his Shulchan Hatar, right? The Zidah told over a story that Rav Mendel Arimanov, the yeah, he was he was spending time by Rav Eli Mendel and he used to eat by his table. And every day he sat there and ate there, and they gave him a lot of kibud, and they gave him everything he needed, right? So one day, the Arimanov decided that why should I, that he's going to stop davening on Parnassah, right? Why should he, why should he daven on Parnassah if he's getting everything already, right? From whatever, he's, he's sitting by the table and he's getting everything, right? So he stopped davening on Parnassah. Afterwards, when he sat down on the table to eat with Rav Melech, the, the Mishamish, the servant, gave everybody a bowl with a spoon to eat, but in front of Rav Mendel, of Rimenov, he didn't give him a spoon. And everybody ate. And Rav Elimelech asked him, why aren't you eating? And he says, he doesn't have a spoon. And Rav Elimelech says, Even on the spoon, you have to ask from Hashem. So that means that the when you dive for a pranasa, it doesn't only mean cash and money. It means everything that's around you, every source of shefa, every every single thing that's happening in your life is dependent on what you pray for. You know, so this guy said, "I'm going to start davening on parnasa," but he didn't chop that even the spoon is part of that is part of that avoid over here. Let me just uh, turn off the WhatsApp mentions over here. Just another example over here about that. That's that's so that's. One example about davening for everything. Here's another example about davening for things clearly. So it says over here, is Chassid Rav Heshel Mikrinki. I don't know who that is. Um, I don't know what he's talking about. Okay, let's say over here. This Chassid Rav Heshel Mikrinki, sorry. He was Mishtakir Medmei Tivuch B'Shuka Oyrus. He worked in the Shuka Oyrus, in the, you know, leathers and skins back then, right? And he put a lot of money into his business, and he was Mashkiach, that every pruta that he made, every single cent that he made, was, you know, was from, was going to be, was, you know, like a legit way of making the money. It was, it was like basically all kosher. Okay. Because herviach kedei parnasos vechai b'mutgudal, and eventually he made enough money that he was able to live. But he still lived pretty poorly, and 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 you know, but but he was but he was since he was a chassid, he 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 made sure that every cent he made was pure and it was in halach and everything like that. Fine. So he said to his friend. His friend said to him. Harav Hakadosh Rav Moshe Midner said to this chassid. He says, listen, in the Medrash it talks about a chassid echad that was going on the way and he was very tired in the desert and he davened to Hashem for a chamor, a donkey. Ach, loy piresh chamor le rechiva. He did, he did not explain in his davening that he wanted a chamor for riding, right? He just said a chamor. And what happened? Right away, an Arab Seicher came. This is a story in the Medrash. An Arab Seicher, an Arab businessman came and, uh, and he bought a donkey and he, and he, what's it called? And he put it on his shoulders. He put it on this chassid's shoulders who was tired. 
Right? So what's the question? The question is, why was he punished? Right? The Lam Dechal Kishet Espalo El Hashem Prat Noaz Mivukashachal Beberer Leloi Remazim Stum. I mean that when you dive into Hashem, you should not ask. You should ask everything clearly without any hints, like you know things that could be taken the wrong way. Hare El Avicha Sheba Shemayim Atam Adaber. You're speaking to Hashem, your Father in Shemayim, and you. Why are you going to be Tigamgin? So I don't understand what the first part of the story had to do with this story with this Medrash, but I guess maybe because he was diving Parnassus the wrong way, I don't know. Either way, there's one more story here. Let me see how much time we did today already. It's okay, you know. It's only 15 minutes so far. There's one more story in the same type of Indian about not davening clearly. He says, In the Sefer Lakute Imre, from Rav Yecheskel Meir, Ma'olam Rachamim Mi Baghdad. Okay, it's probably an old guy, sage from Baghdad, a very holy Yid. It brings a story from the Sefer Maisechia. There was a man who was going on the way and he was holding Kish Shal Kemach Al Ksefa. He was holding a bag of flour on his shoulder. Okay? And that. And this and this bag was 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 tied, and tsrar befiv. It was tsrar. It was like uh, sealed, whatever, at the mouth of it. Okay, so obviously that no flour could fall out. And when he came to one place that was full of mud and 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 and, and tar, whatever, a very place, and he went inside of it, and he was gonna, and he was. He was in danger. I guess there was a lot of mud. He could have drowned, whatever it was. And because of his fear, he wasn't able to even get out of there at all. Right? And he dove into Hashem. And he said, Right? Hashem, take me out of this. I guess he was trying to say Tsaras, but he said Tsura. Ad shahutra hatsura jefiha kis nishbach kola kemas batit. Kola kemach batit. I mean that he davened to Hashem to take him out of the out of the out of this tsara, out of this tsura, but really he was answered in a way that the tsura of this bag of flour opened up instead. Because of Sham Shuroy Hoyul the Fire She Natsil Mitit Hayavan, Allah Yoimer had their tsura. He should have said, Please save me from this mud. Not that Hatter Tsura loosened the 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 struggle, whatever it was. Even though it's kavana yitba that he shouldn't sink and drown, right? Be and he should be safe in there. The the this um, the, this um, this uh, not opened up on the on the mouth of the opening. A person should know. It's very important. That he should be mefarish sicha. Rabbeinu also says. To even fire Shasicha clearly. The Lo Yispalo Bilahatas Hayes is not to tell him while you're swallowing your words. It's very a little hard, a little intense for sure. We want Hashem to answer us and Hashem is Rahmanas for sure. And these are stories that we could, you know, learn from just to be clear when we're praying and everyone should be good. I think that uh, Thursday we're probably not gonna have a video because it's Tishabab. So everyone should have an easy fast and uh, drink water and uh, pray to Hashem.